Hi, I'm Carl Lubridge from Extra Cheesy Games, and today I want to do a tutorial on a couple of tools that will help you debug your visuals. One of these is called um, the Frame Debugger inside of Unity, and the other I'm going to talk a little bit about is a tool called Texture Packer. Um, I'm going to try to do this without my glasses because I put kind of a glare on, this, on the image as I'm talking. Hopefully I can see everything clear enough to do this. Today's one of those days when... Uh, my eyes feel a little clearer than normal. I'm approaching 50, so when I'm that old, uh, eyes start to go out. So you young game developers, know your eyes one day. You won't be able to see text the size of ants. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and show you the problem I'm having and how I discovered it. Now, I kind of did this offline so I knew what was going on so I don't have to sit and bore you with pausing and thinking through things. All right, so this is my game, Humans Must Eat. Um, I've got it zoomed in here. Let's see, let's go in. I'm gonna pause this right there, and I'm gonna show you the problem. One of the problems you have in games is uh, you, you'll have a problem that you've gotta figure out where it is, and it isn't immediately obvious where the problem's coming from. If you look, this is a small thing I'm hoping it'll show up on the video. Down here, you see these two white dots. And I've been seeing those for a while, and at first when I saw them, I thought I had some crud on my monitor until I was going to do uh, some work with uh, modifying the Sky Dome, and I thought, why the heck are these showing up? And so there's a tool inside of Unity that can help you hunt down visual problems like these. And, you know, when I first learned Unity, or was first learning it, they throw so much at you. It's, it's like trying to take a drink from a fire hose. And some of the, the stuff, your brain automatically just says, well, that's advanced, that's advanced, this is advanced. And you just are trying to start off just doing the basic things, just the baby steps. Um, but we've had issues where why is a visual costing so much when we think it should have been inexpensive? A good example of this was um, a car, for example. We thought it had three draw calls. And yet when we were seeing the report, we'd see as many as 16 draw calls. And we're like, where the heck are these coming from? Well, I'm going to show you this tool. And you go under Window, and you go down to Frame Debugger. And you'll get this window that does nothing at first and until you hit Enable. And now what this does is it takes a snapshot of your uh, what's being currently rendered in your game camera. And you get a big long list of stuff here, right? And as you click on this, it'll let you see what it is that's being rendered. And sometimes it's it's useful just to see that because you realize, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a bunch of stuff in here that I didn't even know was being drawn. So this is a very good way to kind of analyze your scene and get a feel for where the problems are coming from. So here's... I think it fo puts folders into groupings of things. But um, so there's those dots down there. And one thing about this, for some reason, this window will not stay on top. Move this one back. Move this one forward. All right, so you see the dots right there. Now, what I did is as I was hunting, pecking through this thing. I clicked on it. It goes, oh, dots disappeared. Dots disappeared. Still disappeared. Bingo. There's the dot. So first thing I knew was this element that's drawn this sky dome is the culprit. Now, let's go over to the game and let's see if I can see what's going on here. If I switch from shaded mode, and this is actually in the scene, not in the game, to wireframe, I saw... Oh my goodness, there's a little triangle being drawn here. The other one got absorbed down here, but I certainly didn't realize there was a dot there. And you know, it's funny, when I did this, I actually started seeing some other stuff that I didn't realize was getting drawn. Some of these elements that are back here. If I, if I move forward in my frame debugger, um, this thing just always goes to the back, which is sometimes unfortunate. Let me go to the bottom of this thing. This is, well, I, I did see something drawn earlier. Let's see, I must have caught it at the right time. Anyway, so that's very useful to help hunt these things down. I'm going to switch this back into shaded view. 
and let's go back out to the game, and I'm going to go ahead and stop this because I don't care. Uh, and now I'm drawing again, and I can I can keep playing. Okay, so those elements are the culprit has been identified. Now I'm going to talk about a second tool that I have found extremely useful, and this tool is called Texture Packer. Texture Packer you can buy on the Asset Store. I think to, uh, you, there's a free version of it, but the free version doesn't pack quite as efficiently as the uh, the paid version. It's not very expensive. I think it was. Let's go look and see how much it costs. Um, at least as of January sixth or whatever it is today. All right. So the Asset Store. Let's look up. And you have to be careful because there's actually a couple of variants on this. There's someone that does 3D elements. This is mainly for sprites. Texture Packer. See this one? This is Texture Packer Pro. That, is, that isn't the one I'm talking about. The one I'm talking about is, is this one here. And that's the site. I mean, this is the company that does it. There's the free version. Okay. If you go out to their website, He'll give you more options what you can do. Let me see if I can go to them. Just do that. These are the guys. So if you if you buy Texture Packer, let me see if there's a store in here. He offers it for free here as well. Store. Here we go. Texture Packer. He has a couple other things, a sprite eliminator and so on. 40 bucks. Okay, so and if you buy all this stuff, you can buy the whole package and you get, if you buy a lifetime version of this, <laughs> yes, um, it's a little more money to buy a lifetime version. He's raised the price a little bit since I bought it. It's 99 What that means is every time he makes an upgrade, he can do it. And you know what? More power to this, this gentleman or this company that's making this because I feel like software developers, it's people that don't buy software, especially... Um, software that isn't mainstream, they got to make their money somehow. And more power to um, Code and Web for making such a great tool. And I think they, they deserve every bit of uh, kudos they can get, and people should pay them for what they do because it's a lot of work to write this stuff. All right, so let's talk about Texture Packer. Nice thing about it is it's easy to identify your stuff. I'm going to reveal this in the Finder. By the way, he didn't pay me to say that. I just did that because I've used this, and uh, I, I've never talked to him. I don't know who the people are that make it. I just know it's a great tool, so that's the reason why I'm recommending it. All right, I'm going to open this in Photoshop, and I'm going to go find the problem here. Uh, why do I just came up twice? Let's get rid of that. I don't like that. Uh, all right, I'm on two monitors here, so it tends to throw it off the monitor. This is the piece of geometry. And I'm going to drop a background into this thing so I can see it. And there they are, the dots. You can see them plainly right there. Ah, how you and you do art, you make mistakes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to step through. I'm going to say, no, no. Yep, there he is. OK, so those are the dots. I'm going to just take that layer, overzealous, tap in the screen. Hit save. Now, Texture Packer, if you watch that, see it snapped that guy up and actually moved him around. Look at that, I put an alpha on there. I don't want that alpha. That's my fault. I'm going to get rid of that. I had these alphas in here for doing the windows. Um, I actually do save this file as a Photoshop file. It's compatible with text. Texture Packer is compatible with Photoshop. Now, see my black. Just keep messing this up. Right, get rid of my little test thing here. Ding. There you go. So the nice thing about this is, like, see how this is the daytime version right there? If whatever I save is like, I can just save that. Now, I, oh, they got two nights. Look at that. It was smart enough to realize that's the same. I'm not sure how I knew that. More kudos to Texture Packer for figuring that out. Let's get rid of that. It must, it must check and see if the pixels are the same. Wow, that's, that's impressive because their file names are different. Okay, so there it is. One thing about the, the, the paid version is it trims it down, too. If you look at this up close, um, you'll notice that this thing has done a really good job to chop out as much content as it can. Notice in my original Photoshop file, I actually had a lot more dead space up here at the top, right? 
Well, this thing was smart enough to trim it down. That's one of the things you do get when you buy the paid version versus the, the free version. And I think you can turn that off if you don't like it. Um, all right. So once I have this resolved and fixed, all you got to do, this, this generates a meta file. Uh, you do want to save your project here, which records how this is put together. It builds it on the fly, though. So every time you throw a map in here, it just automatically comes up, and you can see exactly how it's packing. It's very straightforward. All I do is hit Publish. It's already wired up to my project for Unity. It's also compatible with other software like Unreal. There's also, you could write, if you're writing your own engine, you could use this tool. So it's not just a Unity tool. It's used for a lot of different um, packages out there, different engines. Let's go back into Unity. Now that maps at 2048, so it's quite large. It takes a moment for Unity to sit here and do its, do its magic and prepare it. Um, yeah, so I, I love Texture Packer. One thing is there's a plugin that comes into Unity to have to receive the meta file that, that this thing generates so that it knows how to unpack it properly and describes it. Um, what that generates down inside of the texture is, if I go look at these Atlas files right here, it's the same, it's the same basic stuff you do by hand. It's already pre-chopped it up, makes them accessible, all the pieces. But it's done. I'm already done. Now, I know that Unity has its own texture packer. Um, I don't know how efficient it is. I do know also that this tool does a very good job about building the mesh nice and tight around the visual. Because one thing you don't want is all that extra dead space wasting processing time. So I, 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 don't, I believe that Texture Packer does. He has written his own little uh, geometry builder that goes around and he shows a demo, at least in his uh, website, about how that is more efficient than the one that Unity comes with. If I'm wrong about that, I apologize, but I, that's what I thought my memory is telling me from when I've watched that before. Let's, let's go watch this and see if our problem went away. Pretty sure it did. Let's hit play. You know, this feature is actually quite handy in uh, Unity, where you can zoom in and out, and sure enough, I don't see my little dots. So, I uh, that's that's all I got to say on that. Um, again, the frame debugger is under Window, Frame Debugger, and Texture Packer. If you're working with lots of sprites, it's a very powerful tool. I'd rec highly recommend it. It's going to be on my. Eventually, I'm going to do a video on the tools that I recommend in Unity, and that's that's going to be high on my list. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, keep on gaming.